Hi, and welcome to another episode of SCB in the Spotlight with Casey Thorpes. Today we have a wonderful guest. She is here from all the way from Japan, <laughs> technically. Uh, but she's been here for quite a while. She's a very interesting person. What she does is even more interesting. I want to welcome a good friend. She's a trainer, a speaker of social graces. I want to welcome my friend, Grace Atsuko Lee. Thank you for coming. Thank you. you see, welcome. Thank you. So Grace, I'm so glad you were able to make it today. And we are going to talk about a few things that you're doing and a few things that you've done. Uh, I want to start off by saying that, you know, you and I, how we know each other. Mm -hmm. We met by, uh, actually by fate. That's I met true. you at a Toastmaster meeting. That's right. And you are now the president of Toastmaster, uh, Specialty Toastmaster Club here That's in correct. Santa Clarita. That's correct. Right? So we're so proud of you. Thank I'm you. I'm very happy that you are Technically, my president. <laughs> <laughs> and you are the uh, PR. Uh, PR. Yes. yes. So the PR, PR. That was wonderful um, meeting you there and, and getting you. to know you. And then I found out so much more about you. I learned that you do etiquette classes. Mm -hmm. You teach etiquette and you teach them to many different uh, companies, corporations, businesses, individuals. Okay. And I just want to know, you know, tell me a little bit more about what you do and why you do it. Well, let me tell you why I do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this happened maybe, I started about 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago, uh, teaching international etiquette. Mm -hmm. And I'm retired from the international marketing business, but uh, I started to do international uh, etiquette because it was necessary. Uh, Americans and Japanese, which I was putting together at that time, um, they needed to learn each other's social graces. Mm -hmm. I have now, um, now I'm getting into teaching Western etiquette to anybody that wants to learn, of course. <laughs> I'll take the class. <laughs> I plan on, you know, learning more about that. More, actually, what I'm really interested in is, as you see, I tried to make you more comfortable here today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you this so is much. my attempt of a Japanese uh, look. And I know it's something I have to work on, I know. But <laughs> you have the OB on. And exactly. Yes, that's very nice. Thank, thank, you. thank you. But um, what I found very interesting about what you did and why you do it is because of your background and where you came from oh, and I why, see, okay. you know. The it's fact okay. that you were, you know, raised in Japan uh, as a young girl because your father was in the military there. No, he was a civilian. He was a civilian, yes. okay. Working for the American government to rebuild Japan. Okay. And he was a black man from the American Virgin Islands. Wow, okay. And he married my Japanese mother, and here I am. Right. <laughs> but at that time, back in the 50s, that's when I was born, they were, the Japanese weren't quite ready for mixed people like me. Okay. So there were a lot of prejudices, and uh, only because they didn't know they just didn't know, you know, right, when you only right. know one thing. Right. You know, that's one thing that I realized that when you only know one thing, you it's so easy to be ignorant. Exactly. Exactly. And then you don't. You and know. not to say that they were ignorant people; they just were not aware of what. Absolutely. You know, they never saw yeah. uh, mixed heritage. Yeah. They were or all a black, Japanese. Or a black person. Oh my before. goodness! A black person. What is that? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's well, they heard of people with yellow hair and mm -hmm. so forth, but. But my, the, the, my mother felt that I would never make it in Japan, or actually most Japanese, because I was considered unattractive, at being Get a mixed. Yes, when you're <laughs> mixed, you're, you know, I was too dark, my hair is too curly, mm -hmm. you know, I wasn't Japanese. Mm -hmm. And she said, the is best way. Uh, uh, the way that they look at you, I, I can't see how they could ever thought you were unattractive, but. To look at you, is there a ranking of skin tone that makes you Absolutely. a more attractive or less attractive person? Really? See, this is olden days. This is like post-war okay, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. post 
two. Two, yes. There we go. So it's 1950s, 1960s, you know, that's when I was growing up. And at that time, it's just, they just, you know, all of a sudden now, after the war, they're getting all these foreigners coming in, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so their mentality at that time was that if you work in the fields, you get dark. Mm -hmm. And people that work in the fields were peasants. Oh, okay. So dark meant... So not much different from American, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's pretty similar to me, but yeah. Yeah, and yeah. If, you're, if, you don't, if you don't work outside, your skin is very peachy and mm -hmm. light and mm -hmm. so forth. So that's, you know, now it's different. Now everybody wants to be dark. Oh, awesome. It's really <laughs> interesting because at that time they were considered, you know, me unattractive. But now they, they, they love mixed kids oh, because, yeah. again, time. It's just yeah. time. Well, they didn't know before. Now they're used to it, you know, say. So my mother said that social graces is the best way to get your respect okay and get people to treat you correctly so we she did a lot of social graces was uh, your mother the, a teacher as well yes okay. she comes from a well-to-do family so you know when you're at a, a certain level mm -hmm. they make you take flower arrangement and tea ceremony and origami? to become a lady or to get yeah well that's your mother or, you know <laughs> or your school teaches you but those kind of tea like tea ceremony Mm. It's part of the social graces. You think tea ceremony is just making tea, right. but it isn't. It's well, in many cultures, tea is very important. Other than our culture, we we're coffee hogs, you know. But in, in like even in England and you know British, their their culture also they have their tea times. And yes, that is. I amazing. think that's where they got it. Uh, okay. A lot of that, from, you know, the the idea of it actually comes from China. But everybody took their own little part of the mm -hmm. of that. The Japanese took it 10 times over <laughs> because you learn tea, but you have to learn how to wear your kimono. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to cook for the season. Wow, season cooking. Yes, for the, product, the, the foods that are in season. At that time, there wasn't any refrigerator or importing from all over the world, so you have to cook with the things that are in are season. In season. Right that is interesting. Then you have to learn about pottery, because you're serving tea in this pot, it's how beautiful it is, where it was made, how it was made. <laughs> you know, that's that's interesting because we have um, some cultures still, you know, like more so in the South, they mm. still try to teach and pass on the social graces to, to our youth. Yes. I don't know how well that's going, but with teachers like you still doing this, I think it should go very well because uh, I'm definitely interested in signing up, you know, <laughs> and maybe bringing a bunch of people on because I think it's very necessary, especially if you like to travel like myself. I plan on going to Japan, uh, to China, to other, you know, to the Orient, to wherever to learn about these other people. And you're kind of like the go-between for that. Yes, but I also teach Western etiquette. Okay. And I, I have to say that if you know your Western etiquette, you can just about get away with things all over the world mm -hmm. because you learn, you'll learn how to treat other people. Mm -hmm. And if you know how to sit, how to stand, how to carry yourself, you know when you look attractive. Right. People treat you so much nicer. You're so right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's not just about the look, but then when you when you Carry when you yourself. yes, because when you look good, you feel good, right. and when somebody treats you nicer, you're nicer back. Exactly. And all of a sudden, it's not just what you look like, but how beautiful you are as as a spirit. As a person. As, as a yeah, spirit. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the confidence, I'm sure, the yes. confidence comes with that. Yeah. You know, we have a short clip that I would like to show our viewers uh, about what you do. Okay. And uh, we'll do that right now and we'll come right back. Okay. So in tonight's Education First Report, News 15's Mary Ellen Resendez shows us how a unique program is giving inner city students that extra edge. Once you have that down pat, then I want you to lift up a little bit. These teenage girls are getting a lesson in proper posture and but walking. It's, it's all part of confidence, an eight-week course in okay. social grades, aimed to give these girls confidence to Hands reach up. their dreams. Yeah. So if you have your head out, then you walk properly and you stand properly. Yeah. I go, wow, that's the person I want to talk to. That's the person I want to meet. 
Grace Lee teaches the course for the city of Phoenix and says learning proper etiquette is important when it comes to your career. You are going to be representing your company, the company, and company usually don't go around teaching social graces. They might teach you your job. Uh, they're not going to teach you social graces. These students learn to sit properly, go up the stairs properly, and which fork to use at the dinner table. It all sounds pretty basic, but it's not for many kids these days. I've been invited to a lot of dinners, and sometimes, like, I didn't know whether, you know, how the coffee cup and which salad fork to eat, it, or I didn't even know there was a salad fork. Christy Johnson says she felt pretty awkward at that moment, but not anymore. This course is already changing how many of these girls feel about themselves. I have a higher health of self-esteem, you know. Where I go out places I know what you know how to be proper. This is part of education. This is part of the growth. This is part of being who you are. And that's worth toasting to. With photographer I could real, Mary Ellen Resendez, News 15. And at the end of that course, the students will get to test out their skills at a restaurant. By the way, that class is also for the boys, mostly girls so far. Here at News 15, we're committed to covering education issues.